is accompanied to the ring by his manager, Sir Oliver Humperdinck. He is in blue trunks at a weight of 244 pounds from Amarillo, Texas, the former World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion, Dory Funk Jr. And his opponent in a black universal at 123 kilos from the Soviet Union, the present United States Heavyweight Wrestling Champion, Nikita Kolov. Well, here we have an interesting situation, in my opinion. Nikita Koloff, the U.S. Uh, heavyweight uh, champion, going up against uh, Dory Funk Jr., uh, former NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Funk obviously has the edge and experience in background, uh, no question about that. Koloff, young, powerful, extremely uh, well-developed, and has adapted extremely well to American catches catch can wrestling. Obviously well enough to capture the U.S. Heavyweight Championship. A great opportunity for Funk, and certainly a tremendous challenge for Koloff. Would you not agree? I would say so, Gordon. You know, Dory Funk held the World Heavyweight title for some four and a half years, the longest continuous reign in the history of the title, to my knowledge. And uh, some say he's the greatest champion of all time, and it would be an interesting debate because certainly Ric Flair being one of the four horsemen and the current champion, uh, I, I almost have to lean towards him, but I've had tremendous respect for Dory Funk Jr. But as you've said, the powerful Russian, I've had a chance to follow his career the last couple of years, and frankly, he's given fits to the four horsemen. Well, we just saw something there as Dory Funk Jr. came at him full four, caught him with a shoulder smash, and Koloff was able to take that, and uh, now uh, Koloff uh, retaliated with a full body slam, and Funk very sagely slips from the ring, and uh, he is going to test Koloff from every direction. One thing about Funk, uh, if I've ever seen a computerized competitor, he's it. This man... Uh, uh, is absolutely ice water at all times in the ring. And this is where Koloff uh, could make that fatal mistake. If he allows his emotions to run amok, uh, he's going to be in trouble. Ah, interesting bit of psychological warfare here. And it was uh, Dory Funk Jr. trying to get in a shot there if he could, and Koloff very quickly. Reverse that situation and moves back into the ring. You know, Gordon, uh, they say that one of the secrets of staying on top in the world of professional wrestling is to stay in tune with the times. And like you said, Dory Funk Jr., Mr. Icewater, but for years he wore a plain jacket to the ring. And it was interesting night to note what a beautiful robe Dory Funk Jr. wore into the ring. And of course, the presence of Sir Oliver Humperdinck, the great genius that he is, adds another dimension to uh, Dory Funk that one did not see a few years ago. That's an excellent point, and it is now uh, Dory Funk Jr. in the blue trunks, moving up against Koloff. Koloff getting the side headlock, and Koloff mounting the pressure now on Dory Funk Jr. I can't help but wonder here if uh, exactly uh, what Funk's strategy must be for, uh, uh, for this match, whether he is going to uh, play a little cat and mouse with Koloff, uh, that, I would think at the moment, seems to be the theory because he certainly has not addressed a, an all-out uh, campaign against him. There's that patented forearm of his, caught uh, Koloff in the rib cage, tried to bring him out, Koloff, uh, hooked onto that top rope, reverses very nicely on Funk, drives the knee to the midsection, Irish whip into the turnbuckle right above our heads, and Koloff scores oh, with a full, full slam. Kind of a standoff. The Russians got that arm cocked for that sickle that's dropped many a man, but Dory Funk very, very cleverly just holding his ground and waiting where he knows the Russian can't get a clear shot at him. Well, again, you know, that's the, uh, that's the thing about uh, Dory Funk Jr. He is uh, uh, almost expressionless, if you will. It's very, di very difficult to find out whether you've hurt him uh, or whether he's feeling confident. Uh, his face remains almost expressionless. Overhook on the head of Koloff brings him down. I still feel, Gordon, that, that both men are still in the feeling out process in this match. Uh, uh, Nikita Koloff knows that as the champion, Dory Funk has got to take the fight to him. He's got to defeat him, and yet it's got to be somewhat intimidating for someone like Koloff to know that you're in the ring with a man that was the world heavyweight champion, the highest you can go for four and a half years. And believe me, Dory Funk Jr., you step back in time and compare pictures, he's every bit the, the great athlete that he was a few years ago. He's kept his weight under control in superb condition. 
Certainly no question about that. And a reversal here by Koloff as uh, Funk floated up on the body, then got the cross face, and uh, Koloff slipped away from it. And so uh, Funk may be just trying to find out exactly just what all does. Uh, Funk may be trying to find out exactly what Koloff has. All right, backing him away. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to uh, take a quick time out here and should a pin on the line and both the champion and the challenger have been, uh, I think, pacing themselves and uh, uh, wisely so because of the uh, time limit duration on this uh, particular match. And both men have that uh, great deep-seated experience that they're not going to go out there and expend uh, all of their energy. Uh, I think both of them respect each other too much to, to attempt a, a too early a, a, a try for a pinfall. I would say you're absolutely right, Gordon. And Dory Funk's had many an opponent in this position in the past, those upper underarm lifters and right out to the floor. And Dory Funk, the classic wrestler, is showing a new dimension. He's going to go out and inflict some punishment. And that's exactly what he's doing right now oh, is he's oh, got pull right off. On that steel rail. Right, exactly, across that steel guardrail. And it is Dory Funk Jr. moving back into the ring. Bear in mind, however, that title cannot oh. change if Koloff is counted outside the ring. So Funk has to count on uh, Koloff getting back in there if he uh, hopes to attain that U.S. Heavyweight Championship. Might point out, of course, uh, some outstanding competition will be taking place tonight at Robarts Arena in uh, Sarasota. And uh, might also point out, of course, that the big uh, Great American Bash does initiate at the Lakeland Civic Center on Wednesday, July 1st. Wednesday, July 1st. Koloff outside the ring once again. And Dory Funk, Jr., former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, is at the moment looking to have an edge going for him. And now, Funk, the attentions of uh, the referee diverted. And again, across that steel uh, guardrail. J.J., I don't know how much uh, as powerful as he is. I don't know how many impacts he can take to the chest. I don't I don't really understand either. Uh, but what I do understand is that in a private conversation earlier tonight, Sir Oliver Humperdinck confided in me that Dory Funk Jr., the classic wrestler, is tired of being Mr. Nice Guy. And I think we just saw uh, a clear example of, of, of what Sir Oliver was referring to. Uh, a very uh, the vicious side that, that Dory Funk Jr. did not demonstrate a few years ago. Well, it could be, too, that Dory Funk Jr. is looking to regain that NWA World Heavyweight Championship and uh, obviously going through Nikita Koloff taking that U.S. title would be exactly the thing for him. He, once again, he was using those forearms a moment ago. A pile driver! A pile driver on Koloff and as big and as powerful as Koloff is, this may well spend the end. Of course, the Russians uh, suffered a neck injury earlier this year the hands of Dick Murdoch and Sir Oliver Humperdinck doing his homework has made Dory Funk Jr. aware of that and he's, he's really concentrated on the neck and the chest area. He has indeed and right now it's Koloff coming slowly to his feet drives an elbow into the uh, midsection of Dory Funk Jr. and Dory Funk Jr. back with those polo like forearms that have uh, softened up so many opponents before he moved in to put on that spinning toe hold. And uh, a battle of battling rams here between these two, of battering rams, rather. Full body slam and pull off now. Great second effort as that adrenaline is really beginning to float. Close to 300 pounds up in the air for that drop kick. And now there he goes into that spinning, spinning toe. Goal. This could be it, Gord. It could be all over. This is exactly the way Dory Funk Jr. won the title, the NWA title from Gene Kaniski. And it was here in Tampa, Florida. So could lightning strike twice. Koloff. Bottom rabbit punch behind the ear that put Funk down. What you're looking at, Gordon, is two of the real superstars of professional wrestling today. And as the Great American Bash on Tour goes all across this country during the month of July, one thing for sure, you're going to see the names of Dory Funk Jr. and Nikita Koloff. I don't care it's whether it's in here in Florida or Los Angeles or San Francisco or wherever it is. Yeah, my punch coming up to... Uh, in Miami, Daytona Beach. And Dory Funk Jr. right over uh, our broadcast uh, table. And it's uh, Koloff, an Irish whip, into the opposite side. Closes in, caught him with the back of the elbow. Seeing that Dory Funk was taking somewhat of a, a, a backward posture at that point, 
Very unusual. You don't see that very often, and that uh, really speaks highly for the power of the big Russian. It does indeed, and uh, Funk's eyes looked a little bit glazed, and he, take a look at him now, and he is not concentrating. His eyes are not, uh-uh. Trip up. No, sir, and the referee, Bill Alfonso, very quickly signaling for the bell. The referee signaling for the bell. And so, Dory Funk Jr. disqualified for outside interference. 